Well, welcome back to a Thought for the Day. So before we read God's Word, let's pray together. Our loving Heavenly Father, as we turn now to your Word, Lord, would your Holy Spirit open our eyes to see the wonderful things in your Word, and would you then apply those things to our hearts? For your glory we pray. Amen. 1 Peter chapter 3 and verses 8 to 12. Finally, all of you, be like-minded, be sympathetic, love one another, be compassionate and humble. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing, because to this you were called so that you may inherit a blessing. For whoever would love life and see good days must keep their tongue from evil and their lips from deceitful speech. They must turn from evil and do good. They must seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Well, in the first seven verses of chapter 3, Peter has been addressing the question of godly living in the family. Now in verses 8 to 12, he extends that to godly living in the church. Uh, though that's not, of course, to say that these verses don't apply equally at home. But they clearly have a wider application. And these five verses fall into two parts. Firstly, instructions for godly living. Secondly, reasons for godly living. So the instructions first. It might seem rather odd for Peter to begin a sentence with the word finally when he's only halfway through his letter. But the word really means something like, so to sum up what I've been saying, as Peter, as it were, comes to the climax of his argument. And verse 8 lists five characteristics which ought to be seen in all Christians. This therefore isn't a list like Paul lists of spiritual gifts in 1 Corinthians 12, a list of which individually we might only expect to perhaps have one or two. No, in Peter's list we should be exhibiting all five. And they're all social commands, they're all to do with how we relate to other Christians. First says Peter, we must be like-minded, literally minding the same things. It's very much the same instruction that Paul gives in his letter to Philippians when he tells them, be like-minded, having the same love, being of one spirit and one purpose, Philippians 2.2. 2. In other words, we should all share the same gospel goal. Secondly, says Peter, be sympathetic, literally be suffering together. It's Peter's version of Paul's rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. And I think if we're honest, we probably all find the rejoicing with comes rather more naturally than the weeping with. But both are needful, says Peter, for the Christian. Third, love one another. Literally love as brothers. Implying love for our fellow Christian believers. Because as Peter told us earlier in his letter, our new life in Christ has also given us new relatives in Christ, our brothers and sisters in Christ. Fourth, he says, be compassionate, literally be tender-hearted. And the only person to whom this word is applied in the New Testament is to Christ himself, that he was tender-hearted. And that only goes to show us how much we will need to be reliant upon his Holy Spirit if we're to exhibit these, this characteristic in our lives, it will come naturally to none of us. And finally, says Peter, be humble. Again, we're reminded another very Christ-like characteristic. So the summary could be really live Christ-like lives, both to our families and to our church. Because our lives are meant to remind others of Christ. Now there's a challenging and a humble thought. Because sadly what our lives I think too often look like and sound like, the conduct which Peter warns us against, 
warns us to avoid at the end of verse, at the start rather of verse 9, repaying evil with evil and insult with insult. And what Peter says is no, not evil for evil or insult for insult, but repay evil with blessing. This is real Sermon on the Mount living. It's real kingdom with a capital K living. Peter reminds us that this is the life to which we've been called. As one commentator puts it, the inspiration of such conduct should be found in our recollection of God's treatment of us. Well, our passage closes with Peter quoting five verses from a psalm that we looked at earlier in this Thought for the Day series, Psalm 34. Indeed, it's widely believed that these verses from Psalm 34 for the early church had formed a kind of catechism or perhaps an early hymn. And what they teach us is that not only must we turn from evil, but we must positively do good. And they also remind us of God's all-seeing eyes, but also his attentiveness to the prayers of his true believers. Remembering and doing these things, says Peter, in the Lord's strength is the only way to enjoy true and satisfying life in Christ. Are you, am I, living that life? Let's pray. Our loving Father, teach us these things. Make our lives, Lord, to show you to others that we may bring glory to you and live a life pleasing to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.